Okay, this video is, does marijuana make you stupid? The effect of marijuana on the brain. Marijuana is being legalized in many states and locations, and it's likely that the frequency of marijuana or related substances will increase, as will the complications. In my personal experience of having gone to junior high, high school, and college, where people abuse these substances, is they go downhill. They underperform over the course of their lifetime. They often have a amotivational like syndrome where they're not motivated to do anything except uh, use marijuana and go to rock concerts. And I had some guys who from my high school dropped out of college and they went to follow the Grateful Dead rock and roll band. Um, I've seen athletes who abused it and their performance was less than predicted. Maybe it impairs their endurance or their motivation. Um, what are the potential benefits of it? A transient euphoria, it's recommended by some for treatment of nausea. Some people use it for glaucoma, but others say there's other better uh, medications for that. It's approved for some really rare form of epilepsy in infants called Dravet epilepsy. Uh, we'll return to that, but what I see happening as it gets legalized, anytime some food or medicine is really profitable, all of a sudden all these miracle claims come out that it cures and helps 20 different things and it totally gets overused. The hype phase of a new introduction of a medication or drug and then it'll take about 20, 30 years before people realize that all that stuff was not true. Actually, I'll, I'll give you a prediction. You know, opioids about 20 years ago were really talked about in a big way, how everybody needs to be more sensitive to patients with pain, and they really should be giving them more opioids. And that, you know, over-irrational exuberance, whatever you want to call it, for opioids led to opioids becoming much more widespread. And, you know, in my just previous lecture, there's now like 70,000 suicide or overdose deaths every year from it. It's totally overrated. So that's my impression also for marijuana. I'm going to get into it some more um, where I go through the research papers on it here on the next slide. I have a friend who's a neurologist, take care of a lot of patients with mild cognitive impairment. And, she, you know, she told me marijuana is terrible for the brain. It's, it's a very serious cause of brain damage. And that's my impression, too, from my, you know, personal experience of knowing people using it and then from reading the papers. You'd be surprised how bad it is. Okay, so um, it impairs short-term memory. person can't learn effectively, and that's a problem. They're more likely to drop out of school. They're more likely to be diagnosed with attention deficit disorder, um, poor, poor school performance. If a person quits and they haven't been using it too long, they often start showing improvements one week after quitting. So it's real important to try to quit as soon as possible. Um, other things, their behavior is disinhibited, like being, you know, intoxicated or drunk in the sense that they're much more likely to engage in promiscuous sex and end up with sexually transmitted diseases. Sexually transmitted diseases are really common. I've had, you know, uh, ob uh, friends tell me they see tons and tons of sexually transmitted disease in their clinic. Um, it can speed up heart rate, can it raise, raises blood pressure, so that's not good for a person with other health issues. Um, impairs coordination, it impairs judgment, they have a slowed down sense of time. Um, it impairs executive function, slower processing speed. Uh, basically, it decreases your ability to react to a situation. They have a significantly increased risk of getting in car crashes, so that's pretty dangerous stuff. Dropping out of school, getting a sexually transmitted diseases, crashing one's car, okay, and potentially being seriously injured. Not good. Scleral injection, decreases intraocular pressure, but according to the so-called experts, there's better treatments for glaucoma. Subjective sense that time has slowed down. We talked about that. Anxiety, they can develop transient paranoias, especially with higher doses, more potent uh, marijuana. The marijuana on the street is becoming more and more potent, uh, so these side effects are becoming more common. Um, it can cause a transient psychosis, especially with the higher dosages. Um, and these psychoses, they're, they're not always easily reversible. Sometimes they last for days, weeks, months, years. And people have to drop out of school. Uh, they become unemployable. Uh, sometimes the marijuana can be laced with PCP. It's another drug. Um, and this can cause psychotic, you know, acute psychotic breakdowns. 
Uh, patients might need to be hospitalized for that. It can, it, marijuana, even without the PCP, increases the risk of schizophrenia. Some people might be genetically vulnerable to schizophrenia, but marijuana makes it more likely they're going to precipitate into full-blown schizophrenia, which might be irreversible for life. Um, there's a very strong link between marijuana use and psychosis. And it's much worse if a person starts at a younger age, if they start below 15 years of age. 15 years of age is a freshman in high school. A lot of kids start smoking marijuana in junior high. Uh, they get, you know, bused to a faraway location, less parental supervision, around a bunch of kids from different areas, very profitable for a drug dealer to sell it to these junior high kids. Um... And it's a big problem all over the place, including in rich communities, because the rich kids got more money, and the drug dealer makes more money off them. Okay, increased risk of suicide. So these are very serious things. Uh, emotional lability. That's my experience too. When I talk to marijuana using patients, they've, it's the weird thing about it is marijuana patients usually think they're doing something clever or smart. You know, an alcoholic or a smoker knows it's a bad habit; they're just addicted. Marijuana smokers think they're doing something cool and good and you know, game in the system or something stupid. Um, patients who are depressed, worst outcomes when using marijuana, increased chronic bronchitis, atrial fibrillation. It is addictive. There's withdrawal syndrome. But here's some of the even bigger stuff. It lowers IQ. It's a brain neurotoxin. Okay, that's an important point. It's a brain neurotoxin. Um, on average, chronic users in one study had eight uh, IQ points dropped. That's a big deal. That's more than half of a standard deviation. Standard deviation is a big deal um, in terms of academic performance. And what I'm saying is, we kind of talked about this in other lectures, but it's very common. People have multiple things dropping their IQ. And, you know, their cognitive ability just keeps on going down the tubes. You know, you start out with a kid, the mother doesn't breastfeed, the kid's got F minus water, uh, given a cell phone at a young age, holding it up to its head, obsessed with the social. Uh, text messaging rather than, you know, reading a book, watching TV all the time, going to a lousy school, eating the sad diet, then put on ADD or other psych meds. You've got all these things, just eating all this processed food with all the stimulants, the glutamate, the caffeine, all these things just damaging cognitive function. You know, the best thing to do would be like Adam and Eve, but with indoor plumbing and heating. And you're seeing these uh, modern persons that you know, have numerous things knocking off a whole standard deviation of their IQ. And, you know, that's why they don't have much cognitive function. Um, they followed up uh, you know, marijuana users through into their 30s, and they'll have a lifetime, uh, lowered lifetime achievement, lowered lifetime satisfaction, lower income, uh, quite often unemployment, criminal, criminal behavior. It's, it's all bad. Uh, a couple other uh, thoughts on marijuana in the brain. A lot of teenagers and other users they think it's a harmless pleasure no it causes brain damage it makes you stupid it causes psychological damage it predisposes you to um, major potential problems worsening depression anxiety and schizophrenia psychosis okay um it's it's plant name is cannabis sativa it interacts with cannabinoid receptors cbrs um, there are endogenous analogs uh, chemicals like the THC, the active ingredient, tetrahydrocannabol. Um, let's see. All right, it's a gateway drug. They'll often, you know, end up doing more substance abuse. So some of the references here are kind of interesting. Like, for example, cannabinoid uh, causes modulation in the mTOR pathway, and that leads to downstream effects that can be blocked with an NMDA blockade for that receptor. The reason that's interesting to me is we're now getting into stuff that affects the glutamate pathways, like in the hippocampus, the memory uh, synapses with uh, long-term potentiation. So what I'm saying is, you know, I'll study this some more, but it's I'm seeing a very frequent repetitive pattern here. You mess around with the glutamate neurotransmitters, and you start messing around with the hippocampus synapses, and you drop cognitive function. So. My advice would never touch this stuff. Never touch anything related to it. Um, okay, here's the next paper here. Marijuana caused persistent deficits in memory learning and working memory. Next paper here. Uh, Long-term cannabis users had impairment in memory and attention, and these were persistent. The more years they used it, the worse. 
They had decreased vocabulary, decreased ability to remember anything, decreased ability to learn anything, decreased ability to estimate time. Whatever way you tested them intellectually, they always did poorly, worse than expected. Um, they did structural and functional imaging. They showed they have smaller hippocampi, smaller memory centers in their brain. Um, this one followed persons uh, through adolescent years to midlife and found lowered IQs. On average, eight IQ points. That's a lot. Um, and then here's another pathway showing uh, problems. And this was actually on a little bit different subject in diabetic encephalopathy, but it relates to the mTOR pathway. And it's just another reminder, mTOR is involved in cognition. I'm going to have to read about that, but mTOR is somehow related to the glutamate long-term potentiation pathways as well. So that's something I'm curious to read about in the future. So anyways, bottom line, marijuana is bad for the brain. Smart move is to avoid it completely. And don't listen to all the advertising that's going to come out in the near future about how wonderful it is. It's all going to be, in my opinion, probably mostly untrue just to sell it.